The sodden doll goes into the garbage bag. The damselfish is startled by Adam's approach. She gives up looking at the other fish in the mirror and swims away. Squawk! Well, the flamingo would say that if it could. Adam puts the plastic flamingo in the garbage bag. The tire is half buried in the sand and Adam can't bag it. Anyway, someone's living there. The tasteless underwear goes into the garbage bag. Adam puts the teddy bear into the garbage bag. Good job! Adam wins the Recycle Champ Award. Adam picks up the old rearview mirror and puts it away. Hey, cool! There was a diver down here the other day using something like that to attract the fish. Nice to find somebody who wants to make friends rather than collect us. Dreaming of pirate treasure, Adam opens the chest. A tiny blue crab has been napping in the chest. He scuttles away to find new shelter. I guess he was napping. Not a good place for it. Adam feels creepy about touch. I think I felt it give a little. The pike snaps into pieces and the key goes flying into the water. <coughs> Out of nowhere, a lurking fish darts forward. Hey, you give that back! He swallowed it! He swallowed it! I can't believe it! After him, Adam! What a pig! The red fish streaks across the reef toward the east. Adam picks up the brightly colored fishing lure. The red fish takes off again.
The redfish keeps up the speed as it heads back the way it came. Him. Where'd he go? Don't know, Adam, but I do know he's packing iron. <laughs> Adam moves the bright fishing lure in front of the anemone. I guess that'll show him to get grabby. Adam picks up the key and tries not to think about where it's been. On a hunch, Adam puts the jar down in front of the dark opening. Let's back off, Adam, and see what happens. I think I hear something in that hole. Find some place to hide. Adam picks up the open jar. Great idea! That'll smoke out anything that's hiding in there. An octopus comes charging out to fight the other octopus in the mirror. He's furious! They're such hermits! Whoops! The octopus sees Adam, a human! White with fear, he shoots a cloud of ink and flees. Phew, just like skunks. Actually, like octopi. That ink's supposed to be like a fake octopus to throw you off the track. Adam reaches down and pulls out the cable. A gleaming wire. I'm beginning to get an idea about what the oracle meant. There's no sense. Adam senses some movement inside the ear. The flashlight fish darts into the jar and settles in the bottom. Wow, look at that glowing light, just like the oracle said. Adam carefully places the glowing jar in his backpack.
Adam places the trident under one corner of the tank lid and yanks. The lid pops off and falls to the sand. Adam pulls the toilet float from inside the tank. What's this round thing? Oh, I know. It's called a float. Round. Let's see, what does that remind me of? It's the prophecy again. A floating orb. Not what I expected at all. Even the oracle has a sense of humor, I suppose. There's just no privacy on this reef. We're going back to the city. Gross me out! It's a mess in there! Adam picks up the hammer, but it crumbles into rust. Adam picks up the steel saw. Of here before we get hurt. Adam holds out the glowing jar. The flashlight fish senses the friendly dark of the cave. Gathering courage, it swims out of the jar and settles down between two rocks. What a relief! Now I can see where I'm going. Adam puts the empty jar into his recycle bag. Are the ones that go down the stalagmites or the stalactites? I can't ever remember. There's a trick for remembering that. Can't think of it, though. The stalagmites go up. The stalactites hang down. If you don't know that, you've never played a space quest. The flashlight fish's steady glow reveals an opening clogged with... Adam reaches up and pulls on one of the brownish rocks. It falls easily to the floor of the cave. A strange green light seeps through the small hole. Another rock pulls out easily. It must not have been there very long. Hey, those are coming out. No problemo. Yeah, it feels more to me like somebody put these here. The greenish color of the water intensifies as the rocks come out. I think something's happening to the water, Adam. I'm getting dizzy. My sonar feels a little off or something. Should I stop? No, we've got to find out what's on the other side. The opening still isn't big enough to swim through.
The opening still isn't big enough to swim through. The light strikes something hidden behind the rocks. The greenish glowing light is so intense. No! It's too dangerous to go in there. I can sense things that you can't, and I have a very bad feeling about this. You need more protection to swim into water like that. The rocks that were clogging the hole. A metal box has been concealed in the pile of rocks. The key turns halfway in the lock and then stops. It seems that salt water has rusted the mechanism. Adam eases the lock with the oily rag. The key turns smoothly in the oiled lock. The box pops open to reveal a suit of protective clothing. I've seen clothes like this. They protect your skin from chemicals. Armor for a modern night. Do you suppose this is it? Adam feels an immediate relief. Whatever was in the water was making it really hard to think. Adam, I can't go any farther. Whatever is in this water is really affecting me. I'll wait right here as long as I can take it. Adam signals OK to Delphinius. A group of metal drums lie rusting in this hidden spot. A familiar greenish glow seeps from the rusting patches in the metal. Now Adam realizes what the oracle meant by poison of the deep. Adam fixes the sonar transmitter to... Adam attaches the impromptu satellite buoy. turns on the transmitter and attaches his improvised satellite buoy to the barrel. The float rises toward the surface. The transmitter is emitting a constant, powerful signal. Adam watches from a distance as the divers carefully collect the drums. Grimly, they bear them to the surface and stow them on the boat for safe disposal on land. Adam gives the metal box and suit as evidence of illegal dumping. He returns to the reef to find Delphinius and continue the search for Cetus. Adam, you did it! The poison is gone! The first part of the prophecy is fulfilled! They've taken it away, that's true. But I'm afraid it will be a long time before anything can survive here. We also have to worry about catching the people who did this. It looks to me like they've been using this spot for a while. But that's something I'll have to leave up to my dad. And we still haven't found Cetus.
Adam is swimming in front of a huge, strange cavern. In the distance, an undersea mountain rises to a peak. A black cave mouth scarves the mountain. A nearby sunken boat juts from a coral cave. A modern harpooning vessel has rammed into the reef shelf. Only the prow is... The ship's cabin door is jammed shut. A cable from the harpoon gun is caught in a corner of the cabin door. Did I tell you that ancient peoples used images of dolphins to represent the soul? A modern... It's stuck. The cable's really wedged in there. Adam, I don't like the looks of it here. Adam! But behind you! Flesh Eater, run! Adam and Delphinius flee in terror from the huge, flesh-eating monster. With a feeling of utter helplessness, Adam prepares to feel the sharp bite of Flesh Eater's jaws. The monster is so close that his hot wake ruffles the back of Adam's neck. In their panic terror of the danger behind them, Adam and Delphinius fail to notice the danger in front of them. They both plow head first into the drift net. The nylon mesh wraps its arms around them. The two are trapped. Dolphinius, we're trapped. Adam, you've got to save yourself. I'll never get out of this thing, but you still have a chance. I won't leave you, Del. So what? We both end up manta food? Do it, Adam. Save yourself. Adam waits for the manta to finish them off. Two helpless victims trapped in the net. To his surprise, Flesh Eater only circles them. Adam maneuvers the sharp shell around and begins to rub it against the nylon net. The shell saws through the nylon, loosening the net's grasp on Adam. He's free! You did it, Adam! Now get out of here, fast! Are you crazy? What kind of friend do you think I am? Adam turns back frantically to cut loose his friend. But before he can free Delphinius, Flesh Eater swoops in. Enraged to see one of his victims escape and determined not to lose the other, he seizes the net with poor Delphinius still in it. And knocks Adam aside with one flick of his huge wing. me now. Adam finds himself suddenly alone. The drift net with its precious cargo and the monster are gone. What on earth, Adam thinks, can he do now? And will he ever see Delphinius again?
Adam wedges the trident under the crack of the bloated ship's door and pushes on the handle as hard as he can. The waterlogged wood suddenly gives way and the door pops free of its frame. The cable that had been jammed under the door suddenly jerks tight as though pulled by a mighty weight. And through the open ship's door, Adam hears a sound. A sound unmistakably sad, unmistakably deep, unmistakably haunting. Unmistakably a whale's call. The whale call is louder here. It's echoing down from somewhere above the ship. Adam holds his breath with anticipation and swims up to investigate. Following the taut cable up and up towards the surface light, up and up, not looking where he's going, until suddenly... Whoa! It's Cetus! With a mixture of joy and fear, Adam approaches the mighty whale. Your Majesty! You're hurt! No wonder you've been missing. You're trapped here by that harpoon. Yes, child. And you are the one foretold. I fear you may be too late. But what happened? How did you get harpooned? It was Flesh Eater. I heard him cry out and went to help. He tricked me into the whaler's path. Can't you get free? You can't just die. Illyria needs you. The harpoon holds me fast. I cannot get it out of my mouth. I am so weak. I have not long. Cetus sinks into unconsciousness and his great eye shuts. The harpoon wound has become infected and he is near starvation from being trapped in this one spot. Cetus is getting weaker by the moment. The barbed head of the harpoon in Cetus's mouth prevents Adam from pulling the harpoon out. It would cause terrible damage to Cetus if the head of the harpoon were not first removed. The back of the whale's mouth is closed here. Adam will have to get further away from the whale if he wants. There's nothing Adam can do for Cetus. From here, Adam can see that unconscious Cetus's jaw has grown slack. His mouth opens and closes in a regular rhythm. Adam decides to make a dash for Cetus's moving mouth. Adam will have to time his approach to the mouth. Adam decides to make a dash. 
Adam uses the industrial saw to cut through the harpoon shaft. The barbed harpoon head falls to the bottom of the sea. From here, Adam can only perform Adam decides to get closer to Adam carefully works the shaft backwards through the wound. The healing potion won't do Cetus any good if Adam... The heal... The heal... The heal... The The heal... The wound is infected and... Adam uses Demeter's precious store of medicine on the wound. Be calm, child. I am much better. I feel the wound already healing. You have saved me. Now that you're better, we have to save Dolphinius. Flesh Eater took him and he's in terrible danger. Flesh Eater, it is time to end the killing. I will call him forth. You must go rescue the dolphin. Meanwhile, Delphinius is reliving the nightmare of being trapped in a drift net, unable to reach the surface for air, unable to free himself. This time, however, Flesh Eater is there to add to his terror as he circles the dolphin, waiting for his victim's struggles to cease. Just as Delphinius arrives at a grim acceptance of his fate, a challenge echoes from outside the lair. Rise, cowardly one. Leave your foul lair and prepare to meet your doom. No more shall you trouble my people, for Cetus has returned. Enraged that the great king has escaped his prison, Flesh Eater wheels from the cave. Go into the lair. Save the dolphin while you can, little one, before it's too late. showed up, I'm about ready to suffocate. I hate this nylon stuff. I'm cutting as fast as I can. Hold on, Dolphinius, just another second, I promise. I'm out here to grab some air, dude. Can't stop the chat, I'll see you outside. There's no re- Adam knows better.
Adam arms himself with the tiny lionfish spine, and with all the courage he can muster, and heads towards the black monster. But before he can wield his weapon, he is spotted by the manta and flicked disdainfully away. He'll have to get more careful in his approach if he's to get close enough to use the spine. Adam arms himself. While the manta is distracted by Cetus, Adam manages to get close to one huge black wing and pierce the tough hide with the lionfish spine. There's a moment of terror in which Adam is sure the poison will not be enough to even slow down the huge beast. But it's enough to make him hesitate in his attack, if only for a moment. And that moment is enough! It's really you! And you killed Flesh Eater! Unbelievable! I'm glad to see you safe, my gray friend. But the Manta is not dead, only there will be time for all that later. Right now, there's a city I'm longing to see, and a hero to be thanked. But where were you, and how did Adam find you, and why did you disappear for so long, and how... In a true champion's welcome, Adam rides on the back of King Cetus in a slow procession to the city. Cetus bellows an announcement of their triumphant return. Come forth, children. Greet thy king and the boy called Adam. Adam slips off the back of the mighty whale and swims to join the happy Allurians. Congratulations, Adam. Oh, I'm so new. Boo-hoo. Bravo. I knew a strapping lad like you could do it. Like unbelievably radical, Adam did. Made your way to go. You have proven yourself one with the greens, Adam. Good show, old boy. Quite spectacular indeed. You're a real hero now, Adam. <laughs> it is well that you did the job, Adam, since I did not have the time. You did almost as well as I would have, mon ami. You were very, very brave, Adam. Child of man. To you we owe our lives, our thanks we now bestow. Adam, you have rescued me from certain death. You have helped put an end to Flesh Eater's reign of terror. You have saved Illuria from ruin. You have made us believe that mankind is perhaps not the enemy we feared it to be. That man can even be a friend. Thank you, Great Cetus. I have learned much from all of you, too. Take this conch. If you ever need a friend in the sea, blow the conch and help will come. A 
Poseidon's conch. Wow! Thank you, Your Majesty. Now, home with you, child. Delphinius, I believe your friend could use a ride back to the land of men. He looks a little worn out. Yes, sir, Your Majesty. Grab a fin, Adam. Adam bids farewell to Illyria and King Cetus, and grabbing on to Delphinius's dorsal fin, hangs on tight for the long ride home. Delphinius! Yeah, Adam. Will I ever see you again? What? Are you kidding? You and your dad die for Dan's? You'll see a hundred dolphins in your lifetime, Adam. One of these days, one of those dolphins will be me. I love you, Dolphinius. Oh, get out of here, you nut, yeah. I love you too. Uh-uh-uh. <laughs>